And the other day I was looking into the internet. I said, what is the life expectancy of a Malaysian? 72.5 years. I'm 69, so I said, bug, I only got about you know, a few years left. <laughs> so I'm running out of time. You know, I have to do as much as I can because I believe my work is important. I believe my work is useful to other people. I believe that people can learn from my work. But I have to do as much as I can. Ken Yang is more than just an architect, planner and author. For over 40 years, he has pioneered eco-architecture and is now recognized as one of the most influential voices in the modern green movement. In 2008, he was recognized by The Guardian as one of 50 people who could save the world. Going back to his upbringing in Malaysia, Ken has always exhibited a strong independent streak. It is this strength that enabled him to follow his passion when his family had different expectations. My father was a medical doctor. He didn't say he wanted me to be a doctor. He implied he wanted me to be a doctor. And so my older sister became a doctor but I didn't want to be a doctor, I wanted to become an architect. I've been to school in the UK. I went there when I was 12 years old. And so um, I became an architect. For Ken, becoming just another architect was never in the plans. He had big dreams and the ambition to build a genuine legacy through his work and teachings. Uh, North Promenade, yep. and this is the South Promenade. Shape the shape, you can, you know, you can increase the shape. You know, what is this? So you have the ugly uh, features, you have the floor finish. One is hip, the other one is mature. Uh, okay. We started business together, my partner Togo Robert and myself in 1976, and uh, we've been in partnership since then. At that time, we only had about 30 people, 20, 30 people. Last year, we doubled the size of the office, so we are now about 80 plus people got no space to put them. I either start a new office or I stay here. But by being close, people interact with each other more. We're, we're looking for people with talent. And I tell my people, and I tell young students, if you want to do anything, do it extremely well. Do it better than anybody else in the world. Or don't do it at all. Never do things halfway. Never do things lukewarm. Just do it your damn best. And the people understand the spirit and they want to do the best they can do. So that is why uh, I'm happiest now than I've ever been. I'm doing the best work in my life. I'm doing the, the sort of work that I want because it took me years to build my brand. It wasn't easy. If you want to be an architect, you have to, uh, you have to accept that it's not an easy life. Today, Ken is considered the world's leading green skyscraper architect. He didn't shift to eco-architecture as it became more popular in recent decades, 
Sustainable architecture was his passion from the very start. I've been working in green architecture since 1971, nearly 30, 40 years, longer than anybody else. At the time when I started doing green architecture, people thought I was a hippie. You know, who does green architecture in 1971? Nobody. When I started business in 76, I had to invent the eco-architecture. Architecture is basically designing with nature and it has to relate to the energy flows in nature, the material flows in nature, the organisms in nature. And so that is what eco-architecture is. Eco-architecture is by integrating our built environment with the natural environment in a seamless and benign way. Everything that we do has an impact on ecology. But if we, if we don't recognize ecology and don't design with ecology, then that is the cause of the current environmental problems. Now, if you look at nature, nature has no waste. Waste is a human invention, you know? Nature recycles its waste within the ecosystem. Some enlightened cities will take some waste and recycle it and decompose it, but mostly it's not recyclable. So the city can never be like nature. And if you ask me what do I think of cities, we have to redesign cities to make them like natural systems. We have to imitate nature, and that to me is the ecological solution. Informing all of Ken's work is a deeper philosophy of life. What we owe each other, what we owe the planet, and how we can reach a more sustainable union with the natural world. The two most complex systems in the planet is nature and humanity, humanity, social, economic, political, physical systems. And the root, the root cause of environmental uh, consequences is us as human beings. We have to change. I can't control other architects. I cannot control other clients. So we can change people's views by example. If I design a green building, it looks good, it works. It has all the good qualities to it. For his part, Ken is doing everything possible to provide education. Beyond his architectural work, he has also authored a dozen books and gives 40 public lectures around the world every year. Every success that Ken Yang achieved was hard-earned. He built the foundations of the eco-architecture movement, where none existed before. Today, he is considered a trailblazer, 
but it was a long journey with many roadblocks, some more frustrating than others. Now people see you and they associate you with the country you come from. You know, I was interviewed for a job in a project in the US. There was myself, Malaysian architect. That's a German architect. That's an English architect. And so the client asked the English architect, where are you from? My client says, are you UK? You do very well detailed buildings there. You're very professional. German architect says, I'm from Germany. And the client says, very good, high tech country. You do high tech architecture. Then they asked me, where do you come from? I said, I'm from Malaysia, third world. So there's always the third world perception. That's the thing that we have to fight. So I have to work harder. I have to be better than everybody else. And that's what I try to do. Now I said you know, earlier on that our life spans about 72.5 years. I was talking to a doctor the other day and he said, well actually that's the national average. But if for an urban Malaysian, your average lifespan is about 85. So I've got a few more years. So I said, that's good. I want to finish my book, do a lot of nice projects, you know, before I die. Frank Lloyd Wright did his best work at the Guggenheim Museum when he was 80. Can you imagine that? He did his best work at the Guggenheim Museum in New York when he was 80. <laughs>